Okay, I'd actually done this video ages ago. This is the 6 inch by 2 inch uh, N45 Gauss neodymium iron boron monster magnet. And here we actually have a compass. The, uh, the uh, shiny part is, of course, aluminum. And the flywheel is made out of brass. The only reason I have the markings on here is you could actually see the flywheel stopping. Now, the question is if everybody thinks that magnetism is magnetism, if you actually take a Gauss meter, which, of course, Magnetism is not magnetism, which is kind of a senseless statement until I actually explain it. And of course, I've explained that in my book and also in my lecture. If you actually take a Gauss meter, you'll actually see that the Gaussian flux right at the center of this magnet is about as strong as it is right along the edge here. There's an intermediate zone right here, but the actual conjugate nature of the geometry of both magnetism and dielectricity are two totally different things. It's uh, the closest simple analogy I could actually draw is uh, to define water pressure at uh, your shower head to be uh, equal to that of the flow rate of it actually going down the drain if the two were equal. Um, while the flow rate would be equal, that doesn't actually define what one is. One is qualitatively different than the other. The actual uh, center, center repeatal uh, convergence here of increasing inertia and acceleration at the center of this magnet is completely different than the centrifugal magnetism that exists out here. This is actually not magnetism at all. However, a Gauss meter doesn't uh, check for that. It only checks for flux and actual rate. What we actually have here is increasing inertia and acceleration. So if I actually take the flywheel and place it equidistance right here at the dead center of the magnet, I should get the exact same results than if I actually take it right over here at the edge, which if you could actually imagine a strong flow coming out in a toroidal, i.e. donut-shaped formation of a centrifugal divergence of uh, force and motion right here uh, with uh, reciprocation to the other side. And of course, reciprocation is uh, kind of a convoluted where we're actually talking about force and motion. And we're talking about geomagnetic precession. But the point being that while a Gauss meter will register essentially the same Gaussian flux right here at the edge as it does the center, we have two completely different natures. So if they are identical, placing the uh, compass with the brass flywheel here, don't say Lenz Law, don't say eddy currents to me. Okay, we're talking about magnetism here. According to every modern, modern connotation and denotation of magnetism, the center of this magnet should have equal results with the brass flywheel as it does right here in the face of the centrifugal edge, but they're wholly different. What we actually have here along the edge is true magnetism. This is actually an extremely simplex principle of Mother Nature, this conjugate nature of uh, magnetism and dielectricity. However, explaining it is rather difficult, and that's unfortunate. But what we actually have here is increasing inertia and acceleration. We actually have the point of centripetal convergence, i.e. increasing dielectricity. The conjugate nature of the inverse uh, toroid and a hyperboloid, the inverse of a hyperboloid is a toroid, the inverse of a toroid is a hyperboloid. We actually have this yin and yang or mirror image, inverse image of inertia and acceleration and force and motion. What am I going to actually do is, oop, <laughs> and the, pur and the uh, purpose of making this video, I kind of forgot. Uh, <laughs> someone's going to make fun of me there. I'm going to use this uh, a Dremel tool to actually uh, spin up and that was kind of funny. This is what happens when you're concentrating on making the video instead of forgetting that you actually have steel inside this Dremel tool and getting it close to this monster magnet. So that was my stupidity on that part because I'm kind of concentrating on explaining things. So go ahead and make fun of me there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this gyroscope up and then I'm going to show you the difference between here and here. What I'm going to do is place it right out here in space so it's the same distance from the surface of the monster magnet, but instead of placing it at the point of centripetal convergence, we're going to place it at the point of centrifugal divergence or true magnetism. You're going to notice that it'll just spin and spin and spin right here until, of course, friction takes over on the actual bearings of the compass. And out here, we're going to have a very, very rapid deceleration of the, uh, of the uh, brass flywheel. So let me spin it up here. That was kind of embarrassing there, you know, really it was. And I knew that, of course, and yet I was not paying attention. When you don't pay attention, stupid stuff happens. Okay. Let me place it right here at the center. Remember I have markings on the top of the flywheel so you could see it um, spin down, if it were. So I'll let it sit here for a while. Okay. I'm not touching the, uh, the axle 
of the flywheel of the uh, gyroscope and uh, if you could hear it properly you can hear it spinning and spinning really fast let me bring it up next to the microphone here now you can't hear it but it's spinning really good so now let's place it out here right at the position you notice it's spinning down rapidly okay and you see it's spinning down now you're thinking well that's just it running out of energy well now before you draw any conclusions let me actually spin it up again and place it at the centrifugal edge okay so we got a nice spin on it here let's place it right out here at the edge where the centrifugal magnetism actually exists. I'm not touching the flywheel, I'm not touching the axle, of course. You notice rapid spin down? Okay. So it actually has really good bearings. This is actually a slightly expensive compass. It's made in England. They stopped making these compass. Uh, I keep saying compass. <laughs> I meant to say gyroscope. I think by experimenting over this monster magnet has affected my brain a little bit, so... Someone's going to make fun of me over the uh, letting the, <laughs> the Dremel tool... There we go. Let's just place it there for a second. There we go. Anyway, you can see it not spinning down here. You can actually hear a slight rattle. where the bearings are a little worn but not very spinning 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 not to do is just take it out here to the centrifugal edge where the actual true magnetism exists and you'll see rapid spin down now description is not an explanation don't say eddy current or lens law to me and I'll tell you very quickly why okay you notice it's it's decelerated when you say eddy currents and you say uh, Lens law to me. You see, according to every modern denotation and connotation of magnetism, by using a Gauss meter, we actually have high magnetic flux right here, intermediate zone right here, and high right along the edge. This is undeniable. Absolutely everybody on Earth that knows anything about magnetism will agree on that fact. However, they think this is magnetism and this is magnetism, but that's not the case. This is true magnetism. This is force and motion. This is actual true magnetism. This is centrifugal divergence that make, uh, makes up the toroidal geometry of true magnetism, which is the creation of space. To say create space and say magnetism, to say volume, is one and the same thing. Everything in the universe only has volume due to magnetism. This, even though it has high Gaussian flux, again, once again, I, I could try to think of the simplest analogy. The simplest analogy is, well, you know, water pressure at uh, the shower head is if it's the same pressure as it's flowing down the drain you know it's the same you know we got the pressure same pressure at the shower head as we do at the drain so we have a little whirlpool at the drain it's like well we have the exact same flow rate if that were the case in the case of a shower head versus the shower drain the bathtub drain but they're two completely different things the uh, of course that's as far as the analogy goes but this is not the same thing as this this is also two way uh, seed experimentation and water experimentation is not the same when you actually place it right here. To actually do the seed experimentation, I actually have to place it along the centrifugal edge, not the point of centripetal convergence. You see, every branch of modern science and physics says, well, this is magnetism, high Gaussian flux right here, measurable with a Gauss meter, and so is this. No, there are two completely and totally different things. I bet everybody's going to make fun of me <laughs> over ignoring the fact that I had the Dremel tool in my hand and I was here this close to the monster magnet and it jumped to the monster magnet. You have every right to make fun of me because I was concentrating on the video. That was pretty stupid, quite honestly. This is why you shouldn't concentrate on three important things at one time, especially if you have something metal. <laughs> Getting close to a monster magnet. <laughs> there you go, baby. Thank you so much for watching. So try to solve that mystery. Um, it's not a mystery at all, but uh, 
This is the easy way to stop a scientist. Too. When I made this video before, like about a year ago, people said, oh, well, you're holding the flywheel. It's actually putting it right here on the edge where it'll really decelerate fast. People say, oh, you're touching it. You know, you're causing it. I was not touching it at all. Those people are liars. I was not touching it. Um, people said, oh, you're touching the axle. Or, oh, the uh, brass flywheel was touching the edge of the magnet. No, 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 no. I was not doing that. I would never make a deceptive video like that. If you don't believe me, you can reproduce this experiment yourself. You'll get the exactly same results. You see, if this is magnetism and this is magnetism, they're both the same thing since they basically have the same Gaussian flux, then they should, this compass should behave. I think you're saying compass. Oh, lordy. Uh, the gyroscope should behave the same here as it does here, but it does not. Um, the reason why I'm always... Uh, thinking of compass when I uh, actually hold a gyroscope is actually a complicated reason, but uh, I grew up with the gyroscopes and compasses, and and uh, it's actually a complicated answer when my brain always wants to say compass when I'm holding a gyroscope, so I, I think I made that mistake three or four times in this video. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you do, you can click the link below, and I'm going to catch hell for letting my Dremel tool had jumped